My name is Lou Chater. I've lived in this area right where I'm standing since about 1944. This river behind us right now uh, supports uh, all of the Pacific salmon, steelhead. There's kayakers and canoers and fishermen and hikers and it just uh, is a tremendous uh, resource for our area here. We, the Stalo people, have used this territory for thousands and thousands of years. We see uh, the snow-capped mountains. We call this the wet coast. But we can't take this for granted. And uh, we all have to work together, you know, to protect the life-giving uh, sacred waters that are in this territory. <laughs> In this region, we are all people of the valley. This is our home. We live in the heart of the Fraser Valley, a jewel of British Columbia and one of the most productive freshwater systems in the world. Flowing out of the snow-capped mountains that surround us, clean and pure fresh water breathes life into this region. It flows through this land through rivers like the Vetter, Chilliwack, and the mighty Fraser, lakes like Cultus and Harrison, and hundreds of wetlands, streams, and underground aquifers. Our home waters nourish our communities and sustain an unparalleled richness of animals, fish, birds, and plants. These waters are home to sockeye, steelhead, coho, chum, and chinook salmon, and they support the largest spawning of pink salmon on the west coast. Every fall, these salmon reach the end of their life's journey and become part of the food chain, providing sustenance to North America's largest convergence of bald eagles. These waters are also home to the largest population of the giant white sturgeon, the biggest freshwater fish in North America. To the First Nations of this region, water has been the lifeblood of their communities for thousands of years. As long-term stewards of the land and water, First Nations are acutely aware of the importance of fresh water and its fragile state. Residents of the valley depend on this water for basic needs, like drinking water and for growing food. But it also supports our way of life, spending time on the beach with our families, fishing, swimming and kayaking. These are the things that connect us to this place and make it home. Water is also crucial to our local economy. Our water wealth supports our farmers, a vibrant tourism and recreation industry, and businesses from breweries to manufacturing. While we are fortunate to live in one of nature's great playgrounds, our home waters are coming under increasing pressure from a broad range of threats, and we can no longer take this abundance for granted. Over the past seven years, Kinder Morgan has had at least four pipeline ruptures in the Fraser Valley, and now this Texas-based corporation wants to build a second pipeline and triple the amount of oil it transports from Alberta's oil sands, greatly increasing the risk of a toxic spill of heavy bitumen oil. The provincial government and the aggregate industry have been working together on a scheme to open up much of our region to aggressive gravel mining, and gravel mining frequently damages critical habitats. Much of the water we depend on is underground. Groundwater is the source of Chilliwack's drinking water and the source of private wells for rural homeowners, First Nations and farmers. It also provides a constant flow of water to our rivers, streams and lakes. But no one is taking care of this invisible resource. Large, multinational companies, like Nestle, have been removing this water for free and then selling it back to us. Chilliwack's pristine drinking water is now chlorinated, and Kinder Morgan's aging oil pipeline cuts right through this water supply. Meanwhile, nearly every river in the Fraser Valley has been slated for private river diversion projects for hydropower. Add to these threats the polluted runoff accumulating from large agricultural and intensive livestock operations and ever-increasing urban development paving over precious creeks and streams, and you start to get the idea. Our water wealth, which we tend to take for granted, is suddenly in peril. But this isn't the end of our story, because we choose hope over fear. We choose action over acceptance. We choose sustainable prosperity over short-term economic gain. And we choose the power of local people over the influence of multinational corporations and distant governments in Victoria or Ottawa. Our goal is a simple one. We seek 100% community control over our local home waters. By this, 
we mean that every decision made about our local rivers, lakes, streams, and groundwater should involve the communities that share these home waters. And thanks to the energy of the thousands of local people who share our passion, we've been having some early successes. Here's what we've achieved together. We made water visible for our local politicians during the provincial election and hosted the very first candidate's debate for water. By the day the votes rolled in, every politician had committed to reforming our antiquated water laws. Over the summer, we drew media attention to the absurdities of our century-old water laws, and we worked together to pile pressure on the government to uphold its promise to overhaul BC's outdated Water Act. And this pressure is working with a new Water Sustainability Act now scheduled for the spring. We've prioritized building bridges between Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities so that we can all work together towards our common goal. And when issues like Nestle's groundwater grab came up, we worked with local First Nations to support their water rights. Through all of this serious work, we've also managed to have a little bit of fun. It's been a productive first year and we've laid some solid foundations, but we're only just getting started. Our strategy is to fundamentally change the way decisions are made so that local people have the power to say yes or no to the issues that affect them. We're not the only community facing major threats to our home waters. All across North America, local communities are being confronted with powerful global forces seeking to build bitumen pipelines, contaminate groundwater with fracking wells, and divert local water sources. These forces oppose the vision of local control. It's just not in their interests. By uniting and mobilizing our community, we will take back the power. We will make government work for local people and set a precedent for communities throughout British Columbia and the rest of the continent. With your financial support, we can hire local organizers to recruit volunteers to engage thousands of community members on the streets and online. Working closely with First Nations, we will develop a protection plan for our local home waters. We will ensure that our politicians are on the side of local residents and will make sure that multinational corporations hear loud and clear that people are taking back the power to say yes or no. With your support, we can achieve our goal and inspire change across the continent. Our wealth is in our water. Together, we will protect it.